channel do happened a week ago after I finished watching the two videos I had to react to SCP and its tribute. And now this is by Captain Miner369. He's a good YouTuber. You gotta support him. Since he got a lot of subscribers, but please give him more because he did amazing for his anime chance because the more he keeps doing it, the more he'll just plan on doing more of these trying to do a series or a movie, something like that. So this one is another Siren Head movie. Look at us last time I watched one of his uh like this testing animation video, the running jump scare attack. That's similar to this other Siren Head game. So similar like that, which I forgot what it's called, but it's just called Siren Head. Because it's not like the Siren Head will have like a dip uh multiple title or something like that. So this one is Crazy Pasta and I don't know who's the boys being in this because I, I didn't watch it yet. I didn't watch it. If I had to look in the description. Okay. So let's just get started. <coughs> Liam Eckert. Oh. Major of the US Mr. Creepy Pasta, I knew. Oh. It's Mr. Creepy Pasta. Oh my god. Anyway, so. MC Special Ops Unit Lamora reporting in. The mountains are cold and quiet. Besides myself, there's only three remaining in my squad. For the past few hours, or any indication, we'll all be dead by summer. That's true. That's true, because you know how Siren Head is for Siren Head skills, abilities, that sort of thing. So you can't escape Siren Head. The thing, ungodly vile beyond comprehension, is still out there in the forest beyond. We found shelter in a cave. They have space providing us safety for a little while. We could easily be right outside our doorstep, and we wouldn't even have a chance to scream. In the event we perish, I leave behind the record of what we found here. Hopeful that the creature will only kill us. Well, what good these notes will do, I can't say. To remind us all that the world we think we understand is. October 20th. Okay. That sound. That's their death. Because it's so loud, so. But that's not like they're dead. So that's like a present, and now we're going to the flashback and how this all started. Second, my squad consists of eight other seasoned Marine officers that I have served alongside for nearly 13 years. Our commanding officer, Jack Taggett, gave us the mission docket at approximately 2300 hours. While I can't include the exact details of the report here, I can summarize to let you know that we were ordered to eliminate a threat that's been identified near the Yosemite National Park. Judging from the initial briefing, many of us had a look of confusion on our faces when we were told to hunt and track down a creature that, by all accounts, should not exist. Most of us assumed this had been some kind of training exercise or that it was merely a secret mission and the orders that we were given were false. That could be true because nobody doesn't believe in these things that there are these creatures around here they had to hunt. Which they never, they never heard of or they don't believe in. Can they just want to be normal people around? That they they'll say there's no just things that this creature or this monster. Which who knows if it's not true? Because have you know about Bigfoot? So there are gonna be more creatures around this around this planet, folks, that we never seen or have these random footage, have the random footage or photos. You know, like the the rake photo that was been seen. All my years, I never expected we'd be going in search of Bigfoot, Lieutenant Bosch said with a hearty laugh. There are a few in our group that have taken our instructions to the letter, though, and studied what little they can to find out about the creature that we were supposed to be hunting. At the time, I was sure the information we had obtained from the second-hand web searches and strange. Wait, 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 wait. It had Trevor Henderson, though, because he's a creator of Sunhead, but why is with the, those arts of his? 
maybe you just show it as like a Trevor Tennyson, as like a different type of universe of him that he took photos when he has encountered with the Siren Head. Or maybe he drew Siren Head. I don't know. Well, of course, he's the art and creator of Siren Head, of course. But I don't know what's with those uh, arts of his, though. And his name. drawings were merely the stuff of folktale. After everything I'd seen and heard, I can't be sure any longer which of the documents we found are true and which are false. The data we obtained told us the creature is approximately 39 to 42 feet tall, with some cited to be as large as 53 feet. But that alone seemed to make it impossible for it to hide in the woods unseen. No creature on Earth had that type of camouflage. Now, other details included that the creature was able to mimic any kind of sound, including voices, which supposedly it used to lure people to their doom, hence the name, but I I couldn't wrap which reminds me of Goatman. Like, have you people know about Goatman lately? That Goatman can, like, I think one of, I think that's true that Goatman can, like, trick people with making voices, but even the uh, disguise as other people. Even if you did watch the It Follows movie, I hope you all did watch that movie, because some of these things are so similar. Like disguising, voice, mimicking, that sort of thing. Who knows, they'll be the same thing for it. <laughs> I my head around why anyone would be fooled to follow such a noise into the unknown. And how could such a lanky creature even feed on flesh? The drawings resembled something like a rusted, dried up gibbon with no feasible way to consume except for. And that's a other type of thing, too, like. How certain hand can eat because the looks of the head, the looks of why it's all skeleton, you know? How could certain hand eat? Oh, well, of course you would do something like vampire just having the blood instead. Just, you know, like, if certain hand has those, uh, those machines making shake stuff, he would just, uh, certain hand would just put the bodies there and boom! <laughs> Mixed with all blood and there, just drinking. I get that's how Siren Head will survive for eating or something like that. A thin mouth near the top of its twin heads. In some, in some ways, it resembled the roots of a tree. You know, winding in and out of the body to create a conglomeration of mangled wires. But none of it, none of it seemed real to me. Even after we arrived, we were given details about its hunting territory. I still deny this was why we were really here. Surely there was some other reason than to track such a ridiculous sounding monster. October 27th, we set up base camp near the foot of the mountains. Three soldiers were told to start reconnaissance of the surrounding area and take photographs of everything. As Taggett explained, the creature could easily hide amid the forest by looking like any other large tree. I decided that evening to entertain the notion that this beast was in fact real and existed in the shadowy, quiet woods that surrounded us. So I asked how it was that this creature had come that, into right? the interests of the United States Army. Taggart put out his cigarette, looked out wistfully towards the stars. But about two years ago or so, there was a Survey going on over in Afghanistan near the Chinese border. Whole battalion wiped out. No one knew what happened for nearly three months. Most of the reports had written it off as some kind of terrorist attack, but then one one of the team members they managed to come back alive. Uh, Hendrix, uh, Henderson. Uh, I can. You said Henderson. Trevor Henderson. I can't remember it was. He starts rambling on and on about how this bizarre creature had found them in the desert. Well, that's similar to one of those photos that these uh, family who went to somewhere far, somewhere around the desert or something, because it looks to the photo it's taking place at a desert, but there are just like a few roads and street lights or something. So that's the thing. Some similar to it. 
Thaggard seemed to pause as though he had heard something off in the distance. He told us that we should set up camp a little further into the mountain trail just to be safe. When we all arrived, when we all asked why, he claimed it to be too quiet where we were. A few hours later, once we had settled down, Bosch noted the team we'd sent out earlier still hadn't returned yet. Tiger took that as a sign that we were already in the creature's territory. He ordered Bosch and I to unload the heavy sound system he brought with us and explained, When the creature's sleeping, it blasts white noise. Soft harmonic music that anyone can mistake is just nature's creatures buzzing about the night. It also keeps the creatures from invading each other's territory. From what I understand, they're very solitary monsters, RCO explained. The rest of us still didn't know what to make out about all this, but obediently complied. The remainder of the night was just as unnerving, as Taggart refused to sleep and kept adjusting the frequency of his radio. I might pick him up, he explained softly. October 30th, nearly all Hallow's Eve. No more appropriate time to be hunting monsters, I suppose. We haven't heard back from the first recon team, and while Taggart seems to believe the monster took him, most of us think they simply bailed. As some of the teams begin to question the CEO's sanity for coming here now that we've confirmed that he is interested in these ungodly creatures, I mean, I too wonder where this all is going to lead. 3.30 a.m. Witching hour. Some say. I hear Taggart attempting to whistle towards the woods as a storm is blowing in. It's sad to see that he's come so far from the man that I respected. But a moment later, after he makes the noise, something out in the brush whistles back. He freezes as a crackle of lightning splits the sky and we begin to hear what sounds like a reverberating quake across the entire forest. Oh, bad weather. Then a low- <sighs> Yep, Silent Hill fog. I hate it. What? What? Why the fuck always had to be so difficult in horror movies these days? Like, the mist? Like, the mist stuff, you know, folks? A droning sound. Sounds across the wood like an actual storm siren used for tornadoes. What the hell is that? Officer West shouted as he stumbled awake and Taggart signaled all of us to remain still. We watched the canopy to see if anything was moving amid the trees. But all we heard was those wrenching noises of massive oaks being pushed over, along with that same droning noise. Eventually it faded away into the night. The tiger told us it was time to go collect evidence. This time... This time we all followed without question. There were approximately seven down trees that we found 45 meters east of camp. Large redwood that could not have possibly been shoved down. That's the same thing when Minecraft always have... Like, maybe people already know this when you're playing Minecraft on Xbox, that new type of Minecraft. Or if you're on PC, they have like an update now. They have the, all these random trees that you pass by or even fell down for no reason. And it wasn't you who done it. Of course... My god doesn't have that idea that once you cut down a tree, it'll fall. It doesn't do that. It still doesn't. So who do, who who did it though? With those trees just falling down? Of course, it had to be some lightning or something. But Minecraft Mojang um have an idea for that tree for the any trees you pass by just fall to the ground fall to the ground. It's kind of mystery. Down by anything except some massive aggressive force our co made sure to remind us that we needed to have our weapons drawn and ready for anything the air was unusually still then i looked down to the ground and saw massive claw marks the size of tire tracks it reminded me of the way bears would mark their territory i sent a chill up my spine that feeling of unease only grew when immediately we heard the strange noise being echoed around us suddenly all of us were aiming at the tree line as the voices echoed loud you should back up. Previous. Square. Dogs. Link. Father. Each voice sounded almost human. Nonsensical ramblings that were designed to confuse and disorientate. 
We heard the crashing of trees around us, and then I turned and saw the unspeakable. A long, bony fingers that seemed to come from the tops of the trees, reaching down and grabbing Taggart like a rag doll, hoisting him up as a more gibberish spelled out. Closed. Shiny. Mom. Determined. Enchanted. I heard Taggart scream and order us to fire, but none of us, none of us knew where to aim amid the trees. A moment later, he screams. Much like the Hunter Van Der Poster, but the, I forgot what that's called, but it shows when you're a realistic mouse instead doing the, with that part of the scene, the, it was a jungle. Everybody fire your weapons. Shoot all of the bullets. Shoot that leaf. Shoot that tree. Did we get him? No. <laughs> If you haven't seen it, please go check it out if you know what I mean. They think it was the John Go or the Chiefs. I'm stopped. And then from the canopy, his body fell with a resounding thud. Ooh. Broken in two by the giant that had ripped his head off with one single bite. Fall back! Fall back! I ordered the others as the blasting siren noise now deaf in the woods and I saw a massive foot lift up to walk towards us. Bosch and two other soldiers did not listen to the warning and tried to fire into the beast. It sounded like the bullets were hitting something like a metallic plate and not penetrating to do any damage and then the forest only had the sound of the creature's confusing, garbled noise. Ooh. As those soldiers suffered the same fate as our CO. November 3rd. There are only five of us left. We've taken to the old fire trails that were used by rangers to radio for assistance. To be honest, not many of us know what we're supposed to do. Anytime we have considered leaving, the creature sends out another mighty roar of noise. Some of it even sounds like people we know. Taggart. I just Bob. saw that again. It's constantly on the move. Amid our limited supplies, we discovered more reports from Homeland Security that detail the the purpose of this mission. To not only to track and monitor the monster, but to attempt to determine how it operates so that our own military can mimic it on the battlefield. According to Senior Officer Harold Garand, one of the main tasks was to find a weakness for the beast and... Yeah, he looks like soldier. But perhaps what was most disturbing yeah. out of the entire report was what the concluding sentence had to say. Should the Delta team prove to be unsuccessful, five more units are standing by to attempt to capture the beast. I couldn't fathom more men coming here and losing their lives the way that Taggart has. Mm. My only prayer is that, is that we're able to survive long enough to warn others to stay away. The most difficult thing that you could try your best to kill Siren Head, but of course, Trevor Henderson doesn't want to show or tell how Siren Head would go get killed easily. Like, the bullets couldn't work. Like, if you tried to saw off the head like an axe or something, who knows? Because who knows what the body made out of. It could be just bones or metal or something like that. But sometimes it's difficult, even when you in SC <clears throat> that in SCP, that's difficult to kill SCP-095 zero, uh, zero no wait, 096 or something like that. That, uh, that gray, that almost looked like the rake, but different, because there's nothing you could kill it. But similar to that you can't kill Sirenhead if you would use a nuke or something. Because there's nothing you could kill these guys, you know? But still, Sirenhead is not, not an SCP. Don't force him, don't, don't force to have Sirenhead be an SCP, because... These, now with these new creatures being shown up, they want those to be SCPs for some known reason. I wonder how Trevor Henson is going to react to seeing that happen. Like, if he has to post something on Instagram that Sign Head is not an SCP. Okay. Okay. Even that Slenderman is not. Either. Okay.
Okay, how do you do that? How do you do that? Of course, you have to choose, uh, wait, wait, okay. Uh, of course, there's weren't, there weren't any, like, keyframes for moving the sun, like, still doesn't make sense, though, like, yeah, but I still haven't looked any other tutorials on my animator. Darn it. <laughs> November 7th. We haven't heard the creature for several days now. We decided to attempt to escape the nightmare. We, we found an old map discarded by some unfortunate camper here, and we're going to use it to find a radio tower. Lost. God be with us that we can find it there without incident. Halfway to the tower, we heard the distinctive slow white noise of the creature echoing around the area. At first, the melody would have been something that could put us at ease, but given what we know now, not a soul dared to take another step. I raised my weapon and moved up the trail, looking about at the different massive tangled roots and wishing I could determine which one might be hiding the malevolent tree got. The other men followed me cautiously as we arrived at the tower, hastily climbing the steps to signal to our home base that we needed rescue. Opening the door to the dusty watchtower, I got the strange sense of being watched as I stepped into the shadowy room. It was clear that the place had not been operated in in quite some time, and that any equipment we hoped to use had now fallen into disrepair. Don't you dare turn that on. There's a first aid kit, a few flare guns. Nothing major, though. Wes reported as he turned to me for orders. With Taggart gone, I... I was opted as leader, and the responsibilities didn't feel as great as I'd hoped. Given what we were up against, I knew that one word wrong could send us to our deaths. I think I opened my mouth to order them to gather what they could, but the words never came out. Instead, that white noise shifted suddenly to a blasting, intense, shrill pitch that made us all fall to our knees in agony. The noise did not let up as I crawled over Don't towards the balcony of the watchtower, using the massive spotlight that was attached to the side of the building to try and get a good you look at the creature. Yeah. I'll never you. forget the long stride. That's a bad idea if you had to turn on the light, because similar to Do You Copy Game, don't you dare turn on that light. Uh, you let the creature know where you are. Don't you dare turn the light. They... It's a bad idea to do that, folks. Of course you have to do that to help one of the survivors around the forest, but no use. Like, don't you dare turn on that light. Don't let it find you. It took as it gracefully sifted through the forest, treating the tops of the trees as though they were grass to be brushed by. It was... It was moving towards us at an alarming rate. I, sh I shouted as loud as I could to my squad to retreat, but already Wes and other officers were convulsing in shock due to the resounding alarm that the siren was giving. They, they were beyond recovery. I pushed my way down the stairs just as the mighty creature reached into the watchtower and took both men with its dry bony hand, raising them high into the night sky as the garble turned to a soft, almost soothing music. Perhaps something to ease them into accepting the fate they were a part of. And then it dropped them towards his open mouth. The teeth gleamed in the moonlight as its massive, snake-like tongue whipped out and gobbled them up. The rest of us stood transfixed as it crunched their bones like we might chew on crackers, horrified at the idea that our fellow soldiers had fallen into the belly of the beast while still alive. Then just as suddenly as it had come, the creature stalked back into the forest, finding its way amid the taller of the trees and disappearing from sight. We should stay here, the man next to me said, trembling as rain began to fall. Maybe that's a bad idea to stay. Like, gather all your stuff, find I a saw cave. no reason to object. Too dazed by the events of the day to even... to even consider making a run for it. November 8th. By mid-morning, we resolved to take the trail into the mountains and head for the nearest campsites. Seemed unlikely that the beast would follow us into a heavily populated area, but... We had been wrong before. 
In the morning sun, I could almost make it out amongst the trees. Long, bony legs and arms stuck it's together to further resemble a massive lumber. As the wind shifted it from side to side, air felt, felt electric as I gave the order to leave. I wondered too as we marched on if it was all alone here in the forest. Most of Taggart's documents claimed that it was the last of its species, but sightings, sightings had been all around the world. No, that's a different thing. Some folks think Cyanhead has multiple species because it couldn't just be one, like how we are around here. That we, there's more humans around here, even more sheep, more dogs, you know. If Cyanhead's only one creature, or there's more of it, because there's something about between Longhorse and Cyanhead at the time, because Longhorse is like a protector. If there's gotta be our species like Longhorse who's protecting humans while guarding attack Cyanhead, you know? world so it seemed almost impossible how could one creature have caused all these problems but I never would doubt its ferocity no not after seeing most of my friends die before my eyes as we reached the mountains we heard the creature As we reached the mountains, we heard the creature wake up again, blasting more mindless noise as it started up the hunt. Look, folks, in horror movies, if you hear noise right behind you that seems like a creature, don't just stand there. Just run. Don't just stand there just listening to it. Just run, okay? Don't be like those type of random characters who just, not very important, they just get themselves killed. Okay? Don't be like that. Would we be safe if we traveled further? I guess only time will tell. Ooh. I didn't try to make any further notes as we traveled this harsh landscape. The creatures seemed to be one step ahead of us the entire time, forcing us into these caverns, mimicking even, even our lost loved ones to torment us with the fact that we are now mice trapped in a maze. I don't know for sure what will happen when it finally zeroes in on our location. I only pray this document's found by someone who... who knows what to do with it. How to get it out there for others to be aware of the threat. Mm. Lieutenant Commander Echo. Who's coming out? Which is tight, that's all. But still, that was amazing. Good animations, good graphics. That was a horrifying ending right there. It's meant to creepy pasta, or the author who made the story did really good in that part. Because nobody these days in the creepy pasta or horror movies never get themselves a happy ending. Because horror movie doesn't get themselves a happy ending. Well, in CDS or Conjuring does. Still, that was brilliant. I think you were the only one who done who and Captain Miner is the first one who did the animation version of this creepy pasta video. I mean, that's really good, really good. <laughs> Even so, the break, of course, I had still looks good. But I'm into the block version of Zion Head because I don't want round or circle stuff, you know. Still, that's awesome. That's a lot of work for you to do that. On if it was all. I mean, the looks of these works that Captain Miners had done, they're really good on it. Major of the USMC Special Man. 
That was awesome, Capminer. You did amazing, and I can't wait to see more of your work. If you decide to just do like a movie or a series or something, because the more you've done your animations, the more you learn things for your graphics, the more you ever think of doing a movie or series or anything you ever plan on doing. Maybe an art could be plus animation, who knows? And that was amazing. I can't wait to see more of it. So, I hope you enjoyed this reaction, folks. Please support Cap Miner because Cap Miner did amazing for his work of this animation. Come on, guys. Nine likes? Give him, give Cap Miner more. Okay? Because it, Cap Miner took a lot for doing this. Please support. Okay? The link is down in the description below. So, you can go to the channel. And watch the original video, and I hope you'll enjoy this. And I might plan on doing watching Team Fabulous reanimated this time, folks. Next weekend, Team Fabulous 2 reanimated. Okay, because I was planning on doing it those two weeks, those weeks ago. Hmm. But still, hope you enjoyed this. This is Lord of Flames here. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, folks. Have a wonderful day.